So some of you might be familiar with the company Celsius. They, came, they make these kind of energy drinks to compete with Red Bull, with Monster, with Logan Paul's Prime. And the stock's been on absolute fire, right? If you zoom out since 2012, pretty much the past decade, this thing is a fast, a fast growing machine, right? 210,000% as they went from, you know, under five cents to $67. Now the stock is down this week. We had a gap down. We're down 8% on the day and we're down from all time highs of about 99, just under hundred dollars. We're down 32%. So is the bull market over? Is this uptrend going to collapse here for Celsius? We're going to jump into the TA, the fundamentals, the numbers, do a bit of a price forecast and let's jump right into it so again celsius we're trading on a forward pe of 66 dollars market cap of 17 billion so there is room for growth there especially if we compare ourselves to some of our peers you can see over the summer typically pretty green for the most part for for celsius in terms of seasonality celsius over here you might be familiar with this it's not available here where i live yet but across the us they are beginning to dominate and really become a, uh, you know, just a, a leader in the market, right? I think they're third. We're gonna get into those details right now. They are expanding globally, which is part of their growth plan. And that gives a lot of opportunity for both bottom line growth, top line growth, as well as stock appreciation. So let's get right into it. A couple of articles I wanna skim through right here. Celsius sold strong growth over the last four week tracking period of the Nielsen data. Celsius is 48% year over year sales growth was way ahead of the 3% rise for Red Bull and the decline for Monster Beverage. Although it marked a deceleration from some of the sizzling growth rates seen over the past year. So part of the reason this thing's pulling on back right now is because it's been growing so fast like over 50 percent growth rate that when they when they print a 48 percent year over year growth rate it seems like sales growth is slowing down and obviously when something's growing in the high double digits or even the triple digits it demands a premium in terms of valuation but if that starts to slow down it can scare investors but you cannot confuse that or, or forget that this is still a tremendous growth rate right 48 percent year over year and the projected growth rate over the next five years the forward revenue growth rate is still well over 30 percent as they expand to international markets okay so that's something to keep in mind let's continue on to this article right here while 37 percent revenue growth is nothing to be disappointed at right that's the quarter to quarter number it would mark a steep deceleration from back-to-back -back years of nearly 100 percent so kind of a summary of what I just said. The business continues to acquire retail share in the US energy drink market. In fact, their market share is up to 11%. So they're now number three legitimately in the US behind Monster and Red Bull. So Red Bull, 36% of the market share in the United States energy drink market, 28% to Monster, 11%, and there really is nobody else, right? Some of these are more really for workouts. They're like pre-workouts bangs with 300 caffeine uh, milligrams crazy um red bull for me tastes like shit but it is the market leader they have branding on point they have all the athletes and the cool videos of course the only one i kind of drink sometimes is monster i actually haven't tried celsius so if you try celsius comment down below but you're going to see how they're differentiating themselves from this entire list because they're not really this super workout pump caffeine kind of thing they're more like a lifestyle drink a healthier drink so they're more their total addressable market is larger right they appeal more to maybe younger children maybe more to women or, or not these uh, you know extreme sport enthusiasts or bodybuilders while pepsi has opened up more cooler doors for celsius where those doors are located is important for future growth celsius now has access to sporting venues university schools hospitality gaming locations and hospitals to push the brand into markets where it had no prior presence. This is referring to a partnership that they began last year with Pepsi. The business is now in many universities with nearly 170 brand ambassadors in various colleges throughout the US. It's getting premium billing as the exclusive energy drink in several hospitals across the US. As such, Celsius' evolving strategy and Pepsi's notable distribution assets provide opportunities for the business to capitalize on areas that would not have otherwise been possible. So this partnership is going to be huge. It's going to be the distribution network Pepsi has, of course, as you know, there's only Pepsi and Coke that can compete at the highest level of kind of drinks in the drinks segment for distribution, right? 
So that's going to be that's going to be wonderful for for someone like Celsius. It's going to open a lot of doors. Celsius now views itself as a meal supplement for breakfast, lunch, and dinner to be enjoyed throughout the day. I don't know about dinner, but traditional energy brands have more squarely associated themselves with athletic pursuits or typically vigorous and aggressive exercise. Celsius has shifted its strategy to associate with casual, regular consumption rather than with activity. That's interesting. Let me know down below if you think that's going to work. But why that's interesting is because you differentiate yourself from your competition. And so you have less competition. You're kind of carving out your own niche or your own little segments of the market where no one's really trying to. I mean, what are you competing with? The seltzer water or something? Like you're competing with, you know, not with these extreme sport things. So I think it's a pretty smart move and it's working. Now, here's the growth plan. They're on the verge of becoming an international business. So all this this is just US, right? This is just US. All that growth rate in the hundred in the triple digits is just US. International markets account for 40% of Monster's revenue, but they account for about 5% of Celsius's revenue. Given its success in North America, there's no reason to believe that the brand and the strategy cannot be as successful internationally in pulling new customer segments into the energy market. They're pursuing a, a dual prong strategy for international growth. It's leaning with Pepsi into the Canadian market, launching in Q1 this year. So that's already happening here. This launch was in grocery stores, Pepsi's traditional channels and club stores like Costco, where they've already enjoyed success, right? Results have been pretty good so far. They've already attained 5.5% market share in just the first quarter. So in the Canadian market, already 5.5% market share in one quarter now making that push into Europe and Australia as well. This expands on, I think their strategy is actually, you know, I think they can beat this 40% of, you know, Monster's total revenues, 40% comes from international. But because of what we just talked about, where they're positioning themselves as this lifestyle energy drink that's not extreme, I actually think they're going to perform better than this and even better than in the U.S. internationally. So I think their international revenue can be over 50% of their total revenue, which is going to make for a fascinating growth story here. Why? Because I think, I mean, having lived in over 30 countries, having traveled across the world, I have four passports, dual citizenships. I don't think the rest of the world is in, as into America. Well, first of all, they're not into just pure working out, weight lift, like gym bros kind of thing. Um, and also just extreme sports as well, right? This this toughness, bravado thing. Uh, you know, people here in Europe, they don't even fucking work out. They just walk. They walk and they drink. I'm obviously exaggerating. They play some sports, but it's not the same. It's it's not the same. If you guys have lived in both, you know what I mean. I mean, there's an LA Fitness in every corner with the guys pumping the steroids and, and snorting the, the pre-workouts. And, and it's just a different vibe, right? And like extreme sports is, is just more... To America's personality and so that excessive athletic pursuit um, I actually think this lifestyle branding you know uh, you know the uh, opening the market opening the market to women and things like that nature they're gonna do better internationally than they do in the US and they're gonna do better internationally than monster does internationally that's just my thesis here store resets will drive visibility so this positive market share momentum that the business has experienced also benefits Celsius by opening up more shelf space in fact in the convenience store space, more than 80% of store owners say that Celsius will benefit from a positive reset in shelf space, which is going to occur this spring. So here's a catalyst for Celsius right now, this year. 7-Eleven awarded Celsius as the supplier of the year in the non-alcoholic beverage category. CEO John Fieldley indicated during the earnings call that the convenience store resets are only one third of the way through. So impressively, Celsius has achieved 72% retail sales growth but still two thirds of those store resets are to come. That's gonna materialize later in 2024. So the rest of this year, expect this catalyst here to play out. So in summary, the product is being deployed in more locations and winning more shelf space in the existing locations. This presents more opportunities for existing customers to make repeat purchases and for new customers to be converted. Celsius is now a margin expansion story. So gross margins have expanded. So that top line margin from 40% just three years ago to 51% in the most recent quarter. We're gonna compare that. Monster does 56%, so average over the past five years. So there is room for improvement there as they approach Monster's kind of you know maturity. Celsius has never been cheap, and that's true. The PE has always been high. Current valuation of 75 times forward PE is a little below its average of the past few years. This also needs to be put in the context of a business that's expected to grow earnings at 40% or more in the next two years. Okay, so we're trading at 54 times 2025 earnings. Celsius revenue growth story shows no signs of dimming. 
Underlying retail growth remains strong despite a change in Pepsi's inventory policy. Upcoming store resets and international expansion all positively contribute to this. And it's now a margin expansion story, it's not just a revenue growth story. So further tailwinds for the business to put it into this upper echelon. And this is the global expansion story. Here's Celsius right here, uh, United States, a little bit in the UK. Now it's just entering Australia and Europe this year, beginning with France. Um, and this is what Monster looks like, right? They're worldwide, they're worldwide. Celsius is a again, healthier option, attracting new audience such as women or people over the age of 50. This undoubtedly increases the total addressable market. In fact, the company represents a greater percentage of the category's incremental dollars. A lot of their increase in consumption does not come from other brands, so it doesn't come from Monster people converting to Celsius, but from their own incremental dollars and from new customers in the category. So even though they're stealing some customers from the competition, what they're really doing is expanding the category. So they're growing the pie of the market. They've also been the only energy company that's capable of getting more than 10% market share over the last 10 years. We've seen others try and fail miserably. It is a cutthroat, cutthroat market, right? It's very competitive. Just two months of Canada presence, already 5, 4.5%. We mentioned that. So how are they gonna do in Europe? I think they're gonna do very well. So all this is being achieved with only one third of the, you know, the, the shelves in the product already happened. Okay, we talked about that already. So this guy thinks that the fact that people eat Celsius with food and lunch and breakfast is a kind of differentiating point. Uh, that makes sense. You know, it's not an energy thing, so you can eat it with food. So maybe when they're on, when they're being sold in franchises like Starbucks, um, since with that Pepsi distribution, so, you know, people might Celsius could cannibalize sales of Starbucks coffees. So people would enter the Starbucks, get their, you know, over here in Spain, I get a croissant with ham and cheese, over there in the US, whatever, an egg McMuffin sandwich, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, a couple, maybe some days you'll choose to have it with a cold Celsius drink uh, instead of with, with a coffee, maybe. Um, another initiative to continue improving sales is they have more sales staff than ever now. Even with these extra expenses, margins have increased without raising their prices, even though inflation even being reduced in some spots due to promotion. So they've actually reduced prices, more staff, but with all these increased costs, their margin should be lower, but the margins are higher. Okay, so that is fantastic, right? If your bottom line is growing faster than your top line, it means you're getting more efficient in your operations. It means your return on equity and your profitability metrics are world-class. It means you're a self-sustaining business and you can grow yourself without the need for outside capital investments or taking on long-term debt, right? So that is good. So we can look at the numbers. We spent 20% of sales on marketing compared to 24% of last of sales on marketing last year, right? Still have agreements with Ferrari, uh, America MLS, and with the Super Bowl. So pretty good there. You can see the GNA numbers as a percentage of revenue. So let's continue on here and let's talk about. Um, uh, let's talk about, I mean, look at this. So we've gone from four cents of earnings per share just two years ago to 27. So about a seven times right there. You can see the sales have gone from 150 million to 350 million per quarter right here, crossing that billion dollar per year mark, which is you know a tripling in sales in just two years. You can see up here, the return on equity numbers have gone from single digits or red. to now oh, consistently over 10%, over 20% return on equity. The gross margins have gone from the 30s to the 40s to the 50s, right? We, we mentioned that Monster is at 56, so still room to grow. And there's no reason to doubt that we can get there because we've shown not just like random sporadic, but consistent gross margin growth here. So there's no reason to doubt that we can continue on that margin story. That Celsius, I think there's just so much growth. And for me, the main thing is the international expansion, right? The international expansion is, is key for a company like this. So there's, there's no reason to believe this thing can't keep going, right? And so we're at this point in time where we're at the same price where we were in February. So kind of a sideways for the, for the whole year. We're gonna probably get to the same price we were in January if we continue this dip here, right? And so we're approaching this, the long-term moving average, which is a key spot here for looking for bullish support. What we have is a fresh green tag on a Jupiter pendulum with volume, fresh green tag, right? green candles and green dots. So we are interested in buying a pullback. We double topped here, so I need to note that we did double top with divergence, right? Green dots, no green dots, evening star, candlestick pattern, also pendulum divergence. So no reason to rush into this. You don't wanna buy on a gap down or on a black candle. Let this come, we can consolidate, who knows? Maybe it's an instant pullback and, and boom, or maybe you know we're gonna pull back, form a base, and it's gonna take several weeks or months. Right, we never know. You know, if you're just pulling back and consolidating, 
um, you know, pull them back. We, we have to, we have to, we have to see and wait for the signals, right? So what we're looking for is no red flags on our momentum indicators. We need to reach the moving average, test it, let the buyers come back in. You don't want a lower time frame red tag. You don't want pink or red dots. If you get a pink dot, you need that divergence to kind of get to nullify it. Green shade comes on, divergence comes on. You have your green entry candle signal, right? The most recent one, you know, gave you 80% gains. It's still in profits if you're still holding that. Or your breakout candle signal, right? If you're looking for consolidate, consolidate. There's no shade flip. You know, you're waiting for that breakout. Here's the breakout momentum candle. So, you know, if you took that trade, you're also kind of in the profits. It gave you kind of an immediate 60%. If you're still holding it, you're still up 60%. And so just, you know, we went over this in a live stream yesterday. You know, if you see the red flags, wait for the triple bottom, the shakeout, wait for something else, wait for a better signal, right? We're gonna see how this develops down here on the daily. We can see we're below the 200 moving average okay and so actually this is not the 200 right now i'm using some fibonacci numbers so the 144 we did tag intraday red so you got to give this time right pink dot showed up so let this do what it's going to do let this play out again just zoom over to the weekly be very patient but this one there's no reason to believe it can't continue growing the fundamental story still has a lot of room to grow so this should pass a hundred dollars here in the near future just wait for i think you're going to be able to get a better price okay and look how they destroy earnings right so the 300 beat 300 100 200 100 this is not a beat this is growth from the previous the same quarter last year right so in the three triple digits all of them this is a massive divergence and i think you know if we're going to start you know we're trading sideways here boom boom but we're beating by 100 200 100 and that's a kind of divergence that is is very important, right? You know, maybe I refer to this Uber chart right here, where when Uber started pulling back and consolidating, it starts, you know, you had a red, not, you know, a red, a red, red, but now, you know, it's, it's a growth story, it starts pulling on back, but triple digit uh, growth, triple digit growth. These fundamentals are backing it up so that when the buyers come in, this has a lot of juice, reason to grow, because the growth story is there in your face. It gave you no red flags, no red tags, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, right? So the pullback, then the bull candle has to come in with volume or the momentum candle, you know, but, but look at the, it's showing the same kind of divergence or discrepancy that I saw there. Same thing for Nvidia. Look at, we had these red, we started to, you know, get smaller numbers than a year ago in terms of EPS. Then we were consolidating after the chat GPT. Oh, is it a bubble, whatever. But during this consolidation, 400% beat, 500% beat and boom off to the races because this is juice we're growing like crazy again boom momentum candle breakout and we're off to the races so how high can this thing go well this is the information for celsius right now the current profit margin is 19 percent current pe is 75 and that's a little crazy right this thing's always been expensive i want to look at monster because we have a comparable kind of the main comparison monster it spends most of its life here in the 40s right in the 40 range now it's had its higher valuation levels where it's in the 60s 70s like celsius is now but you can see it spends most of the time in the 30s in the 40s right 50 you know now it's right now it's at 34 okay and so let's keep that in mind when we do this um profit margins you know bottom line profit margins we've been improving um quarter you know every single quarter like we mentioned let's take a look at um monster over here and look at their net income margins so you know the last 10 years they've been kind of above 20 right 20 24 24 26 26 30 25 18 23 23 right and so we're at 18.63 and there's no reason to believe we won't i'd say at least just match monster right we saw that they're operating efficiently the return on equity numbers are really high right remember we looked at this right here their, their, their metrics are pretty nice let's go to weekly and remember return on equity they're, they're becoming profitable self-sustaining beast that doesn't need outside investments um, we saw that they have more sales staff they have more expenses and they're selling the drinks for cheaper but their pro their margin numbers are better so that is telling right they're, they're running efficient machine a well-oiled machine i'm just going to increase this at a very modest one percent per year to reach kind of these monster levels in four years 23 percent profit margins that's that's one avenue for growth here what we ask ourselves is there's four avenues where stock can grow at share price that's either margin expansion multiple expansion right that's a dividend which we don't count here um buy share buybacks and and sale and top line growth right and so margin expansion is certainly one way 
So we did that. And now we see that a current price of $68 today will be $245 in four years if nothing else changes. That's a 260% total return. What else can we play with? I don't think we have room for multiple expansion because 75 is expensive. I think as the growth story settles down, as we're more mature, we're gonna get to that monster level of the 30s to 40s PE. So let's take us down a little, actually. Let's take us down to more reasonable numbers. Now, we're still in a much faster growth phase than monsters. You saw that they're growing at negative, right? Red Bull 2%, monster negative, and we're still 50. So we're at a much different level. It's gonna take a decade to get to where monster is now or, or longer. You saw the globe map, monsters all over the world and, and the red, but still, just to be safe, right? For margin of safety, we're gonna reduce us by five points each time and get to the 50s, which is fair. Now we only have a 180 price in four years, total return, we're still more than doubling our money. That's pretty good. Sales growth that we're projecting is 30%. Now I'm being conservative with that because if you look at the growth story here, the revenue growth forward is 52%, right? Their five-year average is 91%, five-year forward is 64. 50 is projected, and I'm projecting 30. So I'm being very conservative here, okay? And we still are gonna pro, I just don't see how we can't make, have money in four years on this stock, right? Even with a 20% sales growth rate, and if we get to 40, we're still making a return on this stock, right? From 60 today to, you know, 96. But, you know, 30 is, is almost half of what they're projecting. But you saw that even with 20, and a PE of 40, we're gonna make money. So let's go back to 30, my conservative projections here. Okay, I think it's still a fast grower. It's gonna demand some kind of valuation. It's not gonna be 30, like so close to the S&P, right? It's not gonna be like 75 forever either. Okay, so I like where we are with this. This one I'm very confident about. This could be anywhere. This could go, they could continue growing fast and this could actually stay at 75 or go into the hundreds like it's been many times. And so the price returns could be insane for the stock. But again, I'm being, I'm bringing this down. I'm being conservative and I'm not taking us to, you know, we've seen monster at 27 at one point, but I'm not doing that either, right? I'm not doing this 50% growth rate that's projected, but they, if they achieve that, you know, we're gonna get to $320 for a 360% return as opposed to 180, which is almost half of that. Okay, so the last thing of the share count growth, 5% dilution per year. And, and I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tone that down a little because if you look at their history here, so you come to their balance sheet and we go to total common shares outstanding, right? The last several years, so from 206, the last five years, you know, 10% of that is 20. They go up by 10, right? So, you know, they go up by half. So 5%, 5% dilution. From 216 to 220, well, 21 is 10, so half is 10 and half of half, so like 2%. 224, like 2% or less, 1% or less, less than 1% dilution at this point in time um, from 2022 to 2023. So they're really not, you know, we, we, we really can be at 1% dilution. And you see that share price growth goes from 180 to 210, right? And so that's, that's kind of what they're showing consistently, so I feel good about that, like I do with the profit margins. We can put us at a 2% dilution just in case to be a bit more conservative there as well. And, and I like this story, but basically you can see we can crank up a bunch of these numbers. Maybe they buy back shares. So it's gonna be, you know, not dilution and that's gonna go crazy too. We're being pretty conservative with these numbers um, and, and there's a return to be made on this stock. It's just a fast growing company. And so I think uh, it, it belongs in a nice, in, in a long-term investment portfolio, right? I'm waiting for cheaper prices because I don't buy in black candles. There's no reason to buy in black candles. So that makes this even better, right? If we can dip another 10, 20%, maybe 10% here, right? So we got to a price of 60, uh, what, what we got? 60, right? If we get into the 50s, our returns are gonna be even better, right? So 60, let, let's go to 60. Well, now our return is 237. So if we can get a nice discount here, that'll be nice. So we're trading at 11 times sales right now. So we can get to 60 or 55, the valuation, the multiple you're paying on sales is gonna be much much more attractive, right? And so that's, and it's gonna just compound your, your four year returns, okay? So that's the way I'm looking at it, 200%. I like to triple my money in four years, that's a good idea, right? A 100K investment would be worth 300K, okay? That's, that's very nice, right? That's very nice. If you put, let's say, you know, 200K is worth 600K over four years, you made $150,000 per year. It's like assets, right? These are assets you own, equities, uh, 
you know, shares in businesses that you own. And so the story looks, uh, looks pretty good here. So let me know your thoughts down below. I think basically to summarize, the growth story is not done. We're seeing this divergence here where we're starting to reaccelerate growth again. Uh, we're going to expand it internationally. We're getting more efficient as an organization. Profitable, right? EPS up, sales up, uh, margins are up, and return on equity and profitability metrics are up. And so we're just dipping here. And I think uh, it's going to be a good opportunity when we retest that long-term moving average to look for a buying opportunity that's going to be about, you know, 30 to 40 percent off the all-time highs for a fast-growing company like this is going to give you a bit of a better valuation at your price point um, for you to enjoy those longer-term returns all right guys so hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching i'll see you tomorrow peace